So this is a continuation of your antibody and antigen lecture or discussion. So for from the previous video, we talked about um, antigen and its classifications and the significance or the capacity of a certain antigen to stimulate an immune response. So in this lecture video, we will be discussing some of the major concepts about immunoglobulins, which are the counterpart of our immune system against foreign antigens. So our immunoglobulins are released by the plasma cells. So when our B lymphocytes are stimulated by an antigen and they undergo differentiation, this differentiation refers to um, the B cells being the plasma cells. So the end product of this stimulation is the production of an antibody. So we call this also as an immunoglobulin. So this is about 20% of the plasma proteins in a healthy individual. So your immunoglobulins are about mostly glycoproteins and they are found in the serum uh, portion of the blood and all immunoglobulins are the bug glycoprotein so most of it are composed of 86 to 98 percent polypeptide but there are also about 2 to 14 percent carbohydrate so ganun ka specific or almost specific yung percentage of structure component ng ating immunoglobulin or antibodies. So, after recovery of the antibodies, it was actually um, discovered through different experiments on what is the structure of immunoglobulins based on the serum protein electrophoresis. So, Pag may electrophoresis na remember sa clinical chemistry, the serum will be placed on an agarose gel and an electric current will be applied to separate out the proteins found in our serum. So if yung electrophoresis medium will be carried out in an alkaline setting, most of the time pH of 8.6, so yung serum proteins natin, if we can remember, this is mostly separated on the basis of size and on the basis of charge. So it was noted that there are five distinct bands observed in this manner when we separate our serum proteins according to um, size and charge under alkaline medium. So meron tayong five bands. Ano yun five bands? Meron tayong um, al albumin, meron tayong alpha 1, alpha 2, beta, and gamma. So these are the five distinct bands in serum protein electrophoresis. And it was noted that the immunoglobulins somehow are the slowest moving proteins and they appear primarily in this region. So anong region yung slowest? Yun yung gamma band. So, it was noted, or it was also discovered that this band, yung gamma band, ito yung may pinaka mataas na activity or antibody activity. So, initially, ang tawag natin sa immunoglobulins or antibodies are gamma globulins because the gamma region is where they um, migrate. And so you will note if there is a certain abnormality or certain um, deficiency or increased production sa immunoglobulin, so yung gamma region yung affected. So again, your immunoglobulins are considered to be the main humoral element of the adaptive immune response released by our plasma cells. Um, your plasma cells, so they release antibody. So, paano ba yun? Um, once an antigen is um, 
recognized, our plasma cells will release antibody. And the antibody specific for, for that antigen can be enough to neutralize bacterial toxins or some viruses. So, ano pala ang tinutulong ng ating antibodies? It can help in neutralization, it can facilitate phagocytosis, and kill microbes. Remember, opsonization, hindi lang mga complement proteins yung pwedeng mag-opsonin, opsonin, maging opsonin, but also um, antibodies that bind on certain antigenic determinants. And also, one of the major um, function of your antibodies or the immune complex as a whole. So, immune complex yan yung antibody na nakabind na sa antigenic determinant. So, ang isa sa mga major uh, function nila is complement activation, particularly in the classical pathway. Kasi yun yung stimulant ng um, C1 complex activation. So, these are the different functions of our immunoglobulins. So, pwede silang ang specific antibody can um, <clears throat> Facilitate phagocytosis by being opsonins. They can facilitate killing of microorganisms by neutralization of antigen. They can also stimulate complement activation. Ano ba ang structure ng ating immunoglobulin? So, yung immunoglobulins natin, so they are made up of basic four chain tetrapeptide. So ang tawag natin doon sa basic chain of tetrapeptides meaning four polypeptide chains is a monomer. So if we have one uh, monomer or the basic structural unit of an antibody or immunoglobulin meron yung four polypeptide chains or a tetrapeptide. So, meron tayong um, two pairs, ay sorry, two pairs, one pair of heavy chain and one pair of light chain. So, ito yung four polypeptides. So, paano ba sila dumidikit sa isa't isa? Dumidikit sila through the presence of disulfide bonds. Ito, disulfide bonds. And it is composed of a3 globular structure. So, uh, inaano natin sila, ini-illustrate or conceptualize as why so that we can understand the structure better. So, yung inner uh, complex, yun yung one pair of um, the heavy chain and yung outer complex of protein, yun yung one pair of light chain. So, ganun ang basic structure of the immunoglobulin. Pero, it somehow consists of a globular structure, three globular structures. So, meron tayong two FAB region, ito yun, FAB region, and one FC region. So, ibig sabihin ng FAB is the term fragment antigen binding and ang ibig sabihin ng FC is yung fragment crystallization. So, makikita nyo dito yung disulfide bonds present and di ba meron siyang um, carbohydrate content and meron ding um, polypeptide or peptide um, peptide linkage na component. So, ito yun. So, hindi siya straightforward na basta letter Y lang like this. But, we do this to conceptualize easier ang kanyang structure. So, again, meron tayong two identical heavy chains. And, the heavy chains are the ones that um, carry the isotypes of our Antibody. So, meron tayong um, general molecular weight of 50,000 to 70,000 daltons 
or composed of 400 amino acid. So, yung heavy chains natin, ito. So, that carries the isotypes of the antibody. So, ano ba yung isotype? Yun yung nagde-determine ng karakteristik ng ating antibody. So, yung delta, gamma, alpha, mu, and epsilon. So, ito yung five heavy chain isotypes that dictate the five classes of antibody. Uh, immunoglobulins. So, kaya tayo merong IgG, IgA, IgM, and IgD because of the specificity of the heavy chains present in our immunoglobulin. So, meron daw dalawang scientists before that actually conceptualize the um, structure of your antibody. So, si Edelman And C. Um, another scientist that conceptualized this is C. Porter. So these are some of the notable scientists that conceptualize the antibody structure and characteristic. So C. Edelman. Um, Mostly, kinarakterize niya yung um, centrifugation characteristic ng ating immunoglobulin. While si Porter naman is the ability of certain proteolytic enzymes to cleave um, the antibody structure into different parts. Okay? So, because of their work, we are able to characterize a different um, properties of our antibodies depending on the type of heavy chains present. So, makikita nyo, di ba sabi is the basic monomer or structural unit of ant antibody is composed of one pair of um, heavy chain and one pair of light chain. Pero, some antibodies occur in pentameric structure or dimeric structure. So, bali, um, composed of different numbers of monomer. Basta tandaan, sino yung nagko-connect sa mga chains natin, mga disulfide bonds. And, ito yung area na to, dito nagbabind yung antigen, and dito naman nagde-dictate ng biological activity. Kasi dito nagbabind yung mga effector cells. Diba, meron tayong kinatawag na epitope, which is the antigenic determinants. Meron din tayong kinatawag na paratope or the part of the antibody that binds to that specific epitope. Sabi natin, meron tayong different classes of antibody based on the heavy chain structure. So, gamma for IgG, mu for IgM, alpha for IgA, epsilon for IgE, and delta for or IgD. So, meron tayong uh, ibang classes ng immunoglobulin that have further subclasses. So, si IgG, meron tayong more or less four classes of subclasses of IgG. And si IgA naman, merong about two subclasses of IgA. And yung light chain ng ating mga antibodies can either be kappa or gamma. Ah, sorry, lambda. So, na remember, these types of heavy chains and light chains are involved in the B cell development. Pero yung ating mu, delta, epsilon, or IgM, IgD, and IgE, wala yan silang subclasses. Clear that we have two identical light chains. So, we have two types of light chains. It can be either kappa or lambda light chain. So, the characteristic of those light chains depend on the um, what chromosome they are encoded on. So, when we say kappa, so it is encoded on chromosome 2 and lambda chains are encoded on chromosome 22. So, the Characteristics of our light chain consist of about 200 
to 220 amino acids. So the positioning of the uh, amino acids depend on the type of sequence of the an antibody light chain. So we have different regions in the antibody structure. So we have what we call the heavy, I'm sorry, what we call the variable region and the um, constant region. So the constant region, this is um, exposed closer to the uh, fragment crystallizable near the hinge region and the amino terminal end of this uh, light chain is the variable region. So please take note that our um, kappa light chains can have identical carboxy terminal end and also same with our um, lambda light chains. So what differentiates them is the amino terminal end of the antibody. But even though they have different structures, there are no general uh, functional differences between the two types. It's, it's just that it was noted that it differs in terms of structure. So always remember, kappa light chains are encoded on chromosome 2 and lambda light chains are encoded on chromosome 22. So mas marami ang kappa because it makes up about 65% of the light chain of human immunoglobulin. Our antibodies bind with each other heavy chain to heavy chain and light chain to heavy chain. So the bond that holds the four polypeptide chains together in a normal IgG, a normal immunoglobulin molecule are made up of disulfide bonds. So it can be from heavy chains to another heavy chain or from heavy chain to light chain. So if there occurs a connection between two light chains, so it is considered as abnormal. Actually, the analysis of <clears throat> this example of two um, light chains binding with each other, this abnormality is termed as the Benz-Jones proteins. And because of that, it was revealed that there are two types of light chains, yung sinabi natin kappa and lambda. Aside from the um, heavy and light chain. So we mentioned earlier that there can be regions or segments present in the um, antibody. So the one that is exposed um, on the surface part or the one that is actually binding to the antigenic determinant is the variable region. And the one that is in the inner part or closer to the constant, um, closer to the fragment crystallizable or the characterization of the antibodies is the constant region. So the varia variable region, C variable, this, sorry, sobra, um, the variable region, this determines the antibody specificity. Diba sabi natin dito, nagkakaroon ng binding towards the epitope of an antigen. Tapos yung constant region naman, this determines the class of antibody. And it does not vary actually within a given class. So ito yung variable, ito yung constant. So ano nga yung bonds that bind heavy to heavy and heavy to light? So those are your disulfide bonds. yung variable region natin um, exists in high variability. That's why variable region. So um, that high variability in the V region of the heavy and the light chain ito are called hot spots or hyper variable region. So again, it is involved in the formation of antigen antibody complexes. 
So the hypervariable region are, consists of um, different complementarity determining regions or the CTRs. I think I have mentioned this in the antigen discussion. So meron tayong CTR1, CDR2, and CDR3. So the hypervariable regions of that heavy chain and the hypervariable regions of the light chain together when they are uh, formed in that structure, it creates the space that is specific for the antigenic determinant or antigen um, epitope. So that is considered as the antigen binding site. So that is the hypervariable region. So, meron tayong three hyper, highly variable amino acid sections. Those are the complementarity determining regions 1, 2, and 3. So, for the regions naman, it has um, shown no unvarying or difference in the amino acid sequence in the carboxyl terminal portion of the Ig molecule. So, it's just responsible for the biologic activity attributed to the specific class of Ig. For example, example, si IgE has a certain ability to stimulate an allergic immune response. So, it is um, its effector cell is able to do that because of the constant region. So, the constant region can contain uh, part of the heavy chain that is composed of its isotype kung mu, delta, gamma, alpha, and epsilon. So, aside that, we have what we call as domains. So, each heavy chain consists of four to five domains and each light chain consists of two domains. So, yung heavy chain natin, Merong four to five domains, so ito yon. Um, one in the variable region, and three or four in the constant region, so ito. One, tapos one, two, three, or for longer antibodies, pwedeng aabot ng four. So dito tayo nagka-count ng uh, domains. So meron tayong tinatawag na CH1, CH2, CH3, and sometimes CH4. So those are the domains. So for the variable region naman, um, or the light chain, it consists of one uh, variable region and one uh, constant region domain. So ito yung VH for the um, heavy chain. So, those are your domains. And, and aside from that, we have something in our antibody structure we refer to as the hinge region. So, the segment of the heavy chain that is located between the CH1 and the CH2, again, take note, between CH1 and CH2 domains, to nakalagay si region na hinge region. So, this Hinge region has a high content of proline and hydrophobic residues. So the high content of proline in this hinge region allows flexibility. So this is allowing the antibody to bend and let two antigen binding sites cover different antigenic determinants. So para siyang nagsisplit split yung ating antibody because of that. Um, hinge region. Specifically, the protein content allows for flexibility. And because of that, the f uh, antigen uh, fragment antigen binding can now cover an improved territory or distance from one antigenic site to another. natin earlier, there was a noted um, activity or procedure, sorry, experiment of a certain scientist named as Porter and also um, Alfred Nisonov. So, si 
Porter used proteolytic enzyme papain in order to cleave IgG into three pieces. So because of this, uh, it was noted that the three pieces was in three almost equal size. And it has different um, coefficient of sedimentation. So because of that, we are able to identify different parts of the antibody structure. So the fragmentation of antibodies using proteolytic enzyme or a peptide bond splitting enzyme allows definable fragments of, antigen, uh, of antibody to facilitate the study of its structure. So ano yung ating mga primary agents? Meron tayong tinatawag na papain and pepsin. So si pap So, it directly acts on the hinge region. So, it will create three fragments of approximately equal size. So, dito siya above. Ganyan. So, because of that, nagkaroon ng bali sa hinge region. So, na-release dalawang fragment antigen binding and isang fragment crystallizable. So, meron tong hiwa dito, papain, because it denotes or symbolizes the three fragments that is, is capable of cleaving the antibody. So, ilan nga yun? Dalawang fab fragments and isang FC fra fragment. Next, for the other proteolytic enzyme, that is your also the digestion mostly of the FC fragment. So it leaves one large fragment consisting of two fragment antigen bindings joined by a univalent bond termed as the ito, ito, itong fragment is termed as the FAB2 fragment pepsin two fragments, two syllables. Now we go types or immunoglobulin types. So, meron tayong uh, five classes, di ba? IgM, IgG, IgE, IgD, and IgA. So, your IgM, so these antibodies, um, it is also referred to as the macroglobulin because it has a high sedimentation rate of 19 Svedberg. Um, the half-life of our IgM is about uh, six days, which, sorry, six days. So the structure of an antibody IgM is composed of pentameric structure with five monomeric units, and the link of this pentameric structure is the J chain. So, it is confined to the blood due to its structure. Hindi siya makapasok sa different tissues. So, merong CH1, CH2, CH3, and CH4 na um, domains. So, your IgM is about 10% of the total immunoglobulin in the circulation and it possesses 10 heavy and 10 light chains kasi nga, it exists in a pentameric structure. So, since it is having 10 antigen binding sites, it is very um, effective in agglutination and cytolytic activity or um, fixing or stimulating the complement. So again, ano yung nag-hold together ng 5 monomeric units ng ating IgM? That is the J or joining chain. So this J chain is a glycoprotein made in plasma cells pa din and it contains anong amino acid? Several cysteine residues. Yan. Okay. Meron tayong several ways of 
breaking disulfide bonds in the FC portion dito. So, bakit natin kailangan gawin? Sometimes you have to study um, our immunoglobulins or further research of our immunoglobulins. So, anong gamit natin dun? To mercap to ethanol and a dithio triethyl or DTT 0.1 molarity. So, sometimes so malabas sa board exam. So, please take to ME and DTT. So, this is again very good or efficient in fixing the complement because of its um, uh, many binding sites. Next, our IGD. So, your RGD represents only less than 1% of the total immunoglobulin. So, that is in trace amounts. So, meron din siyang monomer domains of uh, 4. So, yung CH1, CH2, CH3, and CH4, and it is very susceptible to proteolysis because it is um, somehow smaller in structure. So, si IGD daw was first noted on a multiple myeloma patient. So, it is later discovered only up uh, at the year 19. 65. So, di ba sabi natin si IGM, ang kanyang half-life is 6 days. Si IGD naman, ang kanyang half-life is about 1 to 3 days. So, it um, is about 180,000 ang molecular weight. So, ang ating IGD mostly found on the surface of immunocompetent but unstimulated lymphocytes. So, remember nyo, di ba, ang first to appear is IgM, and then ang second to appear is the IgD. So, it is the second type of immunoglobulin to appear on the B cell surface. Although, its function is not completely understood yet, but it is the uh, second antibody to appear on the surface of baby lymphocytes, and there is a high surface expression, and its intrinsic flexibility allows it to be an early responder to the presence of an antigen. So, ano yung isa sa mga important to take note with IGT? So, it is um, involved in B cell surfaces that are involved in B cell activation. So, those cells that have IgM on their surface, IgM receptors on their surface, escape in, um, incapable of an IgG response. Pero those with both IgM and IgD receptors are able to respond to T cell health. So, during this time, capable ang, ang ating B cell to perform switching to synthesis of either IgG, IgA, or IgD. Uh, IgE. So, it was noted na even though wala pa siyang known function in the immune response, it may be playing a role pala in regulating B cell maturation and differentiation. Antibody na IgE. So, our antibody IgE, di ba, na-mention natin before that our complement proteins are humoral part of the innate immune immunity, but they are heat labile. So, if we expose our serum to a high temperature, it can denature the complement. And the antibodies are the ones that are more heat stable, but si IgE it is heat 56 degrees Celsius. So, it is known for its um, low concentration sa serum. But it has a high ability in stimulating mast and basophils. So, yun ang isa sa mga um, important characteristic of our antibody na IgE. So, the IgE 
does not actually participate in the like most immunoglobulin. So, ang ginagawa niya, um, instead of agglutination, obscenization, or complement fixation, it stimulates mast cell degranulation or basophil degranulations together with other cells of the allergic immune response. So, meron tayong tinatawag na hypersensitivity reaction and allergy and that is facilitated somehow by the IgE binding to mast cells, I mean stimulating mast cells and basophils allowing the granulization. So, ganun ang nangyayari. So, it is also um, capable of bearing immunity against certain helminthic parasites. So, please take note that our um, effector cells, meron silang high affinity na tinatawag natin na FC epsilon R I molecule. So, this molecule is found exclusively on the cells that, um, that are stimulated by IgE. So this, uh, this surface protein will bind usually to the uh, CH3 domain of the variable region. I mean of the um, FC region. So ganon ang ginagawa ni IgE. So Next, antibody classes. So this is one of the most important antibody classes because uh, it exists in four subclass and it is also capable of invoking immune response at the same time. It is capable of passing through the placenta. So ang ating IgG G1 is the one na may pinakamataas na concentration and IgG4 naman yung pinaka mababa. So, ano ba ang difference ng IgG1, 2, 3, and 4? So, it is with the position of their um, disulfide bridges between the gamma chains. So, because of that, the there is a differentiating variable in the hinge region which uh, affects the ability of our antibody to reach for certain antigen. So, yun ang functions ni IgG. So, um, among the different subclasses, IgG1 and IgG3 are the ones that are mostly involved in inducing response to protein antigens. And yung IgG2 and IgG4, 2 and 4, are associated with polysaccharide antigen uh, stimulation or induction. So, ganun ang um, importance ni IgG. So, our IgG is involved in neutralization of toxins and viruses. Next is our IgA. So, di ba sabi natin it can exist in two forms, IgGA1 and IgG, ay sorry, IgA1 and IgA2. Si IgA1 is a monomeric IgA and si IgA2 is a dimeric IgA or the secretory IgA kasi ito yung form of IgA that we usually note in um, secretions or mucous membranes. So, this is again inactivated by IgA protease. So, the different predominant immunoglobulin can also depend on the um, type of surface present. So, pagka secretion or mucosal surface is usually um, dimer pag, or IgA2, pag sa serum, IgA1. So, meron tayong tinatawag na secretory component in our IgA. So, doon yung naka-attach sa, sa hinge or 
first one, but uh, attached to the FC region. So, yan yung tinatawag natin is na secretory component. We'll summarize the different characteristic of our antibody classes. So, remember CIGG1 and IGG3, they are particularly good in, um, in initiating phagocytosis. And um, yung ating IgG, it also has a high diff diffusion na coefficient allowing it to enter different extravascular spaces more readily than other immunoglobulins. Okay? So that drops up wraps up our immunoglobulin or antibody lecture. So we focus more on the um, characteristics of each antibody class and the structure of the immunoglobulin as a whole. So in some parts of your IS midterm, there will be a discussion on some antigenic, um, antigenic recognition and expression depending on the MHC classes. So thank you for listening and study your book. God bless.